Hi, this is a video to show off a new workflow. Um, if you're familiar at all with the mesh workflow, a lot of this will be similar. But if you're not, I suggest you go check out that video that's included in the asset store link, uh, all available on my YouTube channel as well. And uh, But just a very small review. The mesh workflow uh, uses a texture backing by default and allows you to paint splat maps onto arbitrary meshes. There are three modes it comes in. The overlay mode, which lets you use an existing shader uh, and then paint splats on top of it. The splat map mode, which lets you just paint splat maps uh, and there aren't any other shaders involved or textures involved, just whatever you splat map down. And then finally the combined mode, which is similar to the overlay mode, but uses a internal shader, which I have written, uh, so that both shaders can be in one, uh, in one shader and therefore um, uh, basically uh, it's faster to draw because you don't have to draw the object twice. The same modes are available for the vertex painting uh, workflow. Uh, so you can have this in overlay, splat map, or combined. Um, so what? why would you use vertex versus texture backed? So the advantage of texture backed is that if this was a quad, uh, I could have lots of resolution on here because I can have a 256 by 256 texture and paint uh, as detailed as I like. Um, the downside is that uh, when you want to explore, uh, store splat maps, you need one texture for every uh, four uh, textures that you can uh, use uh, to splat map with uh, to store the weights. They're stored in the RGB and A channels. Um, so if you have uh, 32 textures, uh, then you need eight splat maps. Uh, the other big drawback is that if you have multiple objects that are all painted differently, uh, or the same object painted in different ways, uh, then you have different uh, splat maps for each one. Uh, and that means that uh, the GPU has to uh, have a different material for each one, which means that you break uh, certain forms of batching. Uh, so if you had hundreds of different rocks, all with their own unique textures, uh, the problem there would be that you would end up with hundreds of materials um, because they would each have their own unique textures. Uh, so yeah, so that's basically how a texture workflow uh, works. Now, a vertex painted workflow is where you're burning the data into the vertices of the mesh, and then the shader is using them. This is an older uh, school type technique, um, and I've ported it up to work with uh, Microsplat. Um, there are some limitations, which I'll discuss. Uh, the advantage of a vertex uh, painted workflow is that it doesn't matter what your UV layout is. So in, or even if you really, even if you have UVs, in a texture back workflow, uh, you can't have overlapping UVs because then you would get the same paint job in two positions, right? Uh, so you need coverage. And it also means that if you have, you know, if you can't generate UVs at all, well, then you've got a problem. Um, whereas in a vertex painted workflow, uh, you could have no UVs on your objects, use triplanar texturing or projected texturing of some type, and then you could paint away and uh, it wouldn't matter that you didn't have UVs. So it's particularly well suited to voxels and uh, other types of uh, generative terrain where you don't want to generate UVs. Um, additionally, uh, the uh, you don't need any textures. So if you were going to um, paint a bunch of uh, objects, like hundreds of rocks, and give them all unique paint jobs, uh, they could still share the same material. Okay, uh, and you could have the, you'd have different meshes for each one because it'd be different geometry, effectively. Uh, but they could, the GPU can basically set the material up once and then draw all of your rocks. Um, and if you're doing any kind of static batching, it can combine them all because they're all the same material. Um, so that's a pretty huge advantage when you talk about performance. Uh, the downside is that you might not have a re resolution. This is a plane, so we actually have resolution on it. It's a 10 by 10 grid. Uh, if this was just a uh, quad, then you would only be able to paint the four corners and you wouldn't have a lot of uh, control over uh, resolution. It also means your, your resolution of the paint job is really tied to those vertices. So if you have big areas with no vertices or you have areas with lots of lots of tiny vertices, it's going to completely control uh, how you're able to paint on this surface. Um, so yeah, so that basically is the upside and the downside. Now uh, there are some Unity specific implementation uh, details we're going to talk about when it comes to batching. Um, but first I'm just going to show you, uh, I have a new painter. Um, it's accessed from uh, Microsplat. Uh, you normally have the mesh painter, which is the texture-backed one, and now you have the vertex mesh painter. And so in selecting that, you can now paint 
on your vertices uh, as your control maps. Uh, you can come in here, you can select different textures. And then if we have things like wetness enabled, we can paint wetness onto our, uh, onto our asset as well. And you can change the brush visualization here. I like the disc one, it's a lot harder to see, uh, but it kind of gets out of your way more than the sphere does. We can paint some different textures down. Uh, I'm using the combined workflow uh, right now. And the combined workflow essentially um, gives me a shader under this one, as well as a, um, let me just turn up the flow a little bit, as well as a shader above it. Um, and so the advantage of that workflow uh, is that we can have this main texture here and we can blend these, these um, other textures in and we can control the blend between those textures, like how strong the normal is, uh, little things like that. So all this should be pretty familiar if you've used any of my tools, any of the painters. Um, and uh, finally, in, there's a utility section here and there's this little rollout. I only have one utility right now called Save Mesh. So why do we need that? When you uh, paint on vertices, you need somewhere to store that data. And Unity does not let us currently store that data right on the mesh as a unique copy. Instead, uh, what I do is I have this vertex instance stream here. And uh, this is the paint job, essentially, on this uh, mesh. And so at runtime, what it'll do is it will construct an, what's called an additional vertex stream of this data and apply it to your mesh uh, such that now it becomes a unique mesh. Well, if we're going to combine all these uh, at runtime in, say, static batching or some type of tool, um, uh, that we can't have runtime uh, messing with that data because it's already been combined in the compile, right? So uh, to bake this data into a mesh, we need to use this little utility here, and this will save out an asset with our mesh, which we can then replace and use that instead. And that will not have the vertex instance stream on. It'll have all this data baked into the uh, geometry that you painted, and uh, and then you could you know paint paint that again and save off another copy for a different paint job, uh, make as many meshes as you want from that, and that's where you get your unique meshes for, say, your hundreds of rocks. Um, there may eventually be other utilities in here if we need them. Uh, it's extensible, so um, yeah. Um, what else should I talk about? Uh, so we talked about baking out these, um, these models. Oh. There is also uh, some limits in the vertex painted workflow, and this has to do with uh, both how the data gets stored on the vertices and how it gets over into the pixel shader. So there is a limit to how much data you can move from the vertex shader to the pixel shader. And having uh, all of these um, uh, sort of uh, blows out that limit if we have all 32 textures. So there's a maximum of 28 textures uh, instead of 32. And then if you use the uh, wetness puddles, streams, and lava, then there is a max of uh, uh, 24 instead because it needs four of those channels. Uh, now, I haven't fully tested this yet. Uh, there may be some lighting conditions or features in Unity that uh, use up extra of those interpolators, um, and that may lower that by another four, um, but we'll see. Um, as I test this more, I'll know. Uh, so you do get less textures. You also cannot have tessellation uh, currently, uh, and that is because uh, of the way surface shader tessellation works. Uh, it does not let you uh, pack more things into the vertices uh, because it won't go through the domain and hull shaders with that data uh, correctly. So, um, so that's kind of the limitation on this workflow right now. Um, it may be possible in, uh, in the render pipelines in SRP land uh, to have tessellation with this, uh, or it may be that the texture um, counts are slightly different due to how they pack uh, data in those pipelines. I have not done support for the SRPs yet. Um, that is going to take some work and some thought about how to do that in a maintainable way through Unity's uh, often breaking changes with those pipelines. Um, but I will eventually get to it. And the nice thing about this is that um, this opens up a whole new realm of workflows uh, for things like voxel systems and stuff to use Microsplat. Uh, because now a voxel can just use triplanar texturing and uh, put some data on the vertices and uh, there we go, we have texturing. Um, yeah, so 
I may offer a uh, another workflow for vertex panning in the future. Uh, this would be more specifically for voxel type engines uh, based on the Megasplat workflow. Um, basically, I'm trying to make sure that uh, Microsplat can do everything that uh, Megasplat can, uh, but better as I'm moving uh, more code into this uh, package. Um, so uh, with this, you can pretty much do uh, most of the things Microsplat can do except for the uh, 256 uh, texture limit. Uh, if I switch this to use the Megasplat technique, then I can get uh, 256 textures. Uh, but the problem with that is that you need a very different painting uh, workflow and you need a, it, it produces a very different look. This look will match with uh, the texture based workflow uh, and get nice soft blends and everything just like that workflow gets. Um, so yeah, uh, that's basically how this works. Um, oh, I should show the component. So the setup for this, if you have not watched the uh, traditional um, workflow setup is exactly the same except you use a different component and so on this object here we have a microsplat vertex mesh uh, script instead of a mesh script and then uh, it basically looks exactly like the other one it has the I'm, because I'm using a combined mode texture it has overrides for the albedo and and all that kind of stuff and the sync buttons and the debug buttons so it basically works just like the mesh workflow it's if you add a different component at use a different painter um, and uh, yeah if you have any questions about this or if you're looking to do integrations with something that's got a vertex based workflow uh, I'm happy to talk to you guys about that and then um, this will be included in the mesh module uh, no additional charge um, I thought maybe I should break it out, but then it just seemed like it would be confusing uh, and there was a lot of code sharing I could do here. So it seemed to make the most sense to just include it in the uh, mesh workflow and make the mesh workflow handle both uh, possibilities in terms of how you might uh, texture um, a mesh uh, in terms of the control textures. Um, I think that covers everything. Uh, everything else that works in the, uh, the, the texture backed workflow should work fine in the vertex backed. Uh, workflow. Everything basically works the same and uses most of the same code. Um, so yeah, I hope this is useful and uh, you're going to see some integrations come out that use this in the future, uh, which will be nice. Um, Alright, uh, that's it for now.